Welcome back to another episode of the Startup Therapy Podcast. This is Ryan Rutan from Startups.com, joined by my friend, the founder and CEO of Startups.com, Will Schroeder. Will, you and I have been doing this for a while, and I don't mean just the podcast. I mean the last 20-something years we've spent building and uh, growing companies. And it's often at this frenetic pace. And why? Because in the startup space, there's this, you know, we're, we're enamored by the idea of urgency and pace and, you know, speed to market and all of these other things. But how long did it take you to realize that maybe we don't always have to go so fast and that we're not really running out of time at quite the rate that we think we are? It took me too long. <laughs> it took me way too long. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, like so many other things that we talk about, Ryan. I wish someone could have come back at such an early age. And I'm hoping folks that are listening, you know, early enough in their careers, all this, this will apply either way and could have said, dude, you've got a minute. You, in fact, you've got a lot of minutes. The reason this came to me later on was because nothing, no self-discovery I did. I was sitting across from the founder of CompuServe, Jeff Wilkins, right? And, you know, for a lot of people don't know what CompuServe was before there was internet the way we know it. There was dial-up CompuServe, which became AOL as well. The different companies that actually merged together. And so uh, Jeff Wilkins, the founder, who's been a friend for a long time, Jeff at the time that he and I were sitting down for lunch, he was 75. Guy looks amazing, by the way, right? He looks like a stock photo of how you want to look when you get older. The silver fox. Yeah, exactly, right? He, he and I are talking, and he's talking about the arc of his career. In basically how long he's been at this and all the exponential things he's done in his career. And he's 75 years old at the time. And I think I was about 45 years old at the time. It occurred to me as he's saying this thing that he's done more in his career in the last 30 years than I did in the first 30 years. Right. I mean, just the, the exponentiality. And it occurred to me that we have so much time in our careers. And I've been the same as you. I've been running as hard as I can. Every year has to be the seminal year. and It's got to be done this fast. <laughs> yep, yep. And I realized, and I started thinking about it, the men and women who have built the greatest things in history didn't do them fast. They actually took their time and built these amazing, amazing companies. So what I was hoping we could dig into today is how much time do we actually have in our real careers for people earlier in their careers this should be the watershed moment where you said, oh, damn, I need to be thinking about my career very differently. And on the flip side, for folks that are later in their careers, starting to realize that it doesn't take forever to do seminal things, but you do need to have a long view. And again, I think this is once again, the antithesis of how people think about startups. And yet, I think it's actually the most valuable way that people should be thinking about startups. Right. And yeah, everybody just wants to hear us talk about the secret formula for the overnight success of a startup company, which it happens. It does. The overnight successes happen all the time. Ten years after they start, <laughs> uh, they, they become overnight successes. Yeah. You know, and it's funny that, you know, this has become such a, a baked in part of the startup narrative. The oldest trope. Yeah. And, and I think that unfortunately, uh, specifically for people who are just getting started in this, it will buy into that and then set the pattern that will then continue throughout their career, hopefully until they hear this and go, oh, there's a different way of thinking about this. Because you and I both know plenty of founders, ourselves included, who have been guilty of this over a long period of time and have sort of figured it out the wrong way, which isn't you know objectively looking at it early on and saying, I have plenty of time. Let's think about what do I want to accomplish and let's think about what are reasonable time frames for doing that. Because as often as we've seen founders who have, who have taken the, the, you know, the fast path and, you know, they're, they're killing themselves, they're trying to do everything they can, it eventually ends up taking them seven to 10 years to be successful anyways. And so we have to wonder, had they just started at that pace and planned to build over a period of a decade, right? Instead of saying like, you know, this has to happen this year, this has to happen this year. And again, we're always, we're always tempering this advice. Like we're not saying don't be urgent about things. Don't try to make things happen fast. But be reasonable about what actually happens within given time frames. Well, you know, you were you were talking about, you know, kind of like what happened in, in the course of a decade, right? And depending on which decade we pick, there's a hell of a lot of density built into almost everybody's <laughs> decades, right? Right. And yet when we think about like, oh, I've only got 30 years left in my career, 40 years left in my career, 
that's three or four decades. In lifetimes is what it is, right? A ton of things you can do in that amount of time. Here's the challenge, though. I think when we baseline how far we are into our careers, we blur that with how far we are into our lives. So, for example, this is the most overused trope, let's say, of a 25-year-old. 25-year-old, how far are you into your career? I'm 25% of the way. Really? Did you start your career at zero? No, you started your career like two years ago, right? You are two years into what will likely be, given the future uh, and longevity, 50 to 70 years of your professional career. You are year two of 50. Why are you shocked that you haven't figured everything out by now? Or said differently, said differently, this has been so life-changing for me. What can you do in 50 years on this planet? You could literally do anything in 50 years. So why are you so concerned about what gets done in the next six to 12 months? And not that urgency doesn't have its place. It does, and that fuels so many great things. But I think urgency has taken the place of having a long view. And the long view is the point of why you're doing any of this to begin with. What's the mark that you want to make over 50 years? What is the epitaph you want to create in your career that said this person had their eye on the prize forever and built toward it nonstop. Those are the people that change the world, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can pick a lot of analogs here, but you know, just think about the legacies that we all respect. None of those were overnight successes. None of those were, were one-time shots. They were all people who worked hard, had a long view, had ups and downs. And that's the other thing we have to remember here is that it's, it's not going to be just this purely linear progression. And it's not going to be just a pure exponential progression either, where it's always some version of up and to the right. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be decades that are better or worse. There's going to be year periods that are better or worse. And that's okay, right? You know, this is the, the whole theory of the stock market, right? Like as long as you average it out over time, you're going to get your 8 to 10%. Cool, right? Take the long view. Build over time. And yet, in the startup space, we just have such an aversion to doing that because it feels like such an arms race from the day we declare that we're going to do this thing. We want something to show off and be able to tell everybody, hey, I did it. See, look, I did it. Full knowing that it's going to take a hell of a lot longer to do that. We've got two paths that have a kind of a different built-in ticker on them. One is your traditional venture route, where once you take on venture money, those venture firms, they have to return all the capital in that fund, which means you have less than a seven to 10 year window to return all the capital in that fund. Okay. That is where the whole startup ecosystem is built, you know, around uh, venture funding, et cetera, in those timelines. And that's where that urgency comes from. And that's fine. There's another side of it where we're saying, I'm bootstrapping this company. I'm not on that timeline. Now, of course, I want it to be successful, the sooner the better, right? Because I want to get paid, of course. But what about something a little bit bigger? What about saying, for what I'm trying to build, if I have this vision for it, if I care about it, what could I make this company over the course of 30, 40, 50 years? The most powerful companies in the world were built over generations, over decades. By virtue of that, the most prolific careers in the world were built over many decades with a single compounding focus. That's what I want to see folks have. Not just where will the company scale this year, that it's important, it's got its, its own uh, virtue and value. However, what we're talking about is a much different purview of our careers in saying, as Ryan Rutan, what can I build over my collective 50 to 60 years of contributing this planet? And when you look at it like that, holy shit, you could literally do anything, but people don't think about it like that. And that concerns me. Yeah, I think they get so caught up in the short term and this need to achieve and this need to show progress. And we've talked about it. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of emotional issues that get wrapped up in this, right? When, when we want to sit back and, and be purely objective, and you and I can do that during the course of a podcast, a little bit easier, right? When you're staring at the mounting bills or the, the declining bank balances from your venture funds or whatever it is that's driving that urgency for you, it gets pretty emotional, right? And you you want to be able to succeed and achieve and, and do what you set out to do. And sometimes it's externally driven, sometimes it's internally driven. It's almost always misguided, right? Whether we're allowing the opinions of people around us to tell us that we haven't accomplished enough by now, right? Because that's the other thing, right? <laughs> I hear this 
all the time. And it, it's always from people who are younger than I. And they're like, well, they want to compare. Like, well, what did you done by the time you were this age? I'm like, <laughs> right, right. you want to know when I walked too? When I said my first words? Like, what the hell does that have to do with who you are or where you're going to be? But people do this. They allow external factors, external opinions to start to form where they think they should be at any given point in time. And that has such a negative impact on the founder mentality and then your energy and therefore your output. Again, we talk about this a lot. There are so many self-fulfilling prophecies in the startup space. When we start to worry that we haven't accomplished enough, guess what starts to happen? We stop accomplishing things. I mean, actually, another side of it, Ryan, is even when you do, it's never enough. Because once you put yourself on the treadmill, I haven't done enough, but I'm telling you firsthand, you know, once you get to that point, it's never enough. It's never young enough. It's never you know a dollar figure that's big enough. It actually doesn't matter. It's, it's a broken mechanic that only a thousand entrepreneurs go through every single freaking second. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's constrain this back a little bit. And let's talk about what you could actually accomplish in any one of those decades. Because if we're talking about, we've got an opportunity to have five, six, maybe seven decades if, if we become full cyborg, right? <laughs> like productive human. Let's talk about what can get done in just one of those decades. And I'm saying this because for a fair amount of our listeners, that would be essentially about under 33, under 32, they haven't even had one yet. They haven't even had a single decade of their professional careers to understand how life-changing you can make just one of these building blocks, not to mention stacking them all. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. In the past decade, for me, I just turned 48. In the past decade, I got married, which is pretty important, right? Had my two wonderful children. We built startups.com. I lived in three different cities. I lived in Santa Monica and San Francisco, in Beverly Hills, and in, in Columbus, if you can count that as well. That's where I started. Went on more trips than I've ever gone on in my life, like explored more of the planet than, I, than I've ever, ever explored in my life, battled some crippling diseases, had 10 surgeries for them. <laughs> Not exactly in the highlight reel, but a lot you can accomplish, you know, in the course of a decade. I uh, bought six companies and all that we did and kind of all the adventures that that entailed. And that's just the start of the list. One decade, one decade. And interestingly, probably not my most active decade. In other words, before when I was like, like single or I was doing different companies, et cetera, or I was running five companies at the same time, I was way more active, right? Now yeah. I'm, I'm in bed by 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's with the least amount of activity. Nature comes into play at some point. One decade, right? That's how much we can put together in a single decade. I'll give you some other examples that I, th I think are, are so illustrative of this product or this point. First one, every single one of the most successful companies in tech history was built in less than a decade. Now, it became what it truly is today in the many decades that follow. I'll use Apple as an example. Apple is, is 100x the company it was in its first 10 years for just a bunch of reasons, just give it enough time. Some companies are not. But if you look at Google, Facebook, uh, you, you name it, you name the company, it took 10 years or less for them to become the titan that they are, which once again means in the increment of a single decade, you can do anything, which also means, which I think is interesting, this might not be that decade. For every one of those founders, it just happened to be their decade, but it might not be yours. It might be two decades from now. I always use this in the context of presidents of the United States. Historically, their most important formative decade was when they were in their 70s. I mean, you should really think about what that is, right? Where they kind of the top of their game, I mean, the most exponential thing you could possibly do, like running the whole world. Everybody has their decade. Now, think of how much you could pack into a decade. And now I'm going to tell you you've got five, six, or seven of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ton of time, right? And yet, there are still people out there who are going to be listening to this and going, yeah, but in my case, right, I need to move faster because of competition or because of, you know, I want to be 30 under 30 or 40 under 40 or whatever the hell it is that's, that's driving you to be driven by a timeline instead of by a vision. Right. And I think that that's, that's an important piece of this is that we have to take, you said at the beginning, we've got to take this long view. And then we have to think about what does that actually take to compose? Right. And, you know, in some cases, I think you could actually make the case that if you try to do these things too fast, you're not going to end up building that thing. Right. Some of these things take time to set. Right. They need to settle in. And to this point of like different decades and kind of different epochs and eras in our lives. 
there's something else that's happened, I think, in almost every founder I know. And again, ups and downs, trials and tribulations. It's not always just this linear path. But we tend to build momentum over time such that certain things become easier in other decades, right? Like there are things that I absolutely have access to now in my 40s that I did not in my 20s. And that's from my personal capital, my network, my net worth. All of these things have changed significantly over time and allow me to do things differently and allow me to look at things differently, right? And so it's not to say, look, just, you know, goof around until you're in your 40s because it's going to be easier now than it was then. That's not the point. But I think that there are some things that change as time goes on that while, yes, we may have less total time to accomplish what we're doing in terms of our total career, right? You know, if you set 50, 60 years that we have to do this, if you've already spent 30 or even 40 of them, don't assume that the pace in those final 20 is going to be the same. And to your point, Will, like you're now in your 40s approaching the 50s. Sadly, yes. Yeah. (laughs) And so you just pointed out that you actually spent the last decade maybe being a little less active and yet being very productive, right? One of the best decades you've had. And so like the pace may change. This isn't to say like, we're just going to keep moving faster and faster. And somehow uh, magically in my seventies, I'm going to be some sort of a hyperspeed jogger. Not that's not what I'm saying, but I'm going to have a lot more resources, a lot more assets at play than I had in my teens, in my twenties, in my thirties. And I think we have to account for that too. We have to plan for the fact that there will be certain things that become easier over time. You know, something that's really funny about everything we talk about here is that none of it is new. Everything you're dealing with right now has been done a thousand times before you, which means the answer already exists. You may just not know it, but that's okay. That's kind of what we're here to do. We talk about this stuff on the show, but we actually solve these problems all day long at groups.startups.com. So if any of this sounds familiar, stop guessing about what to do. Let us just give you the answers to the test and be done with it. You snuck a word in there called pace, and I don't want to overlook this one. I think something we've talked about endlessly on this show is that we've got to maintain pace. And we're talking about you know physical health, mental health, et cetera. And I think part of where this kind of cautionary tale comes in is that if you really want to build something truly long-term, world-changing, you're going to need to pace yourself. And again, we've had whole shows about this where you know we, we have all these issues where we didn't pace ourselves. And it's like, if we really want to win that Ironman triathlon, if we really want to win something so incredible and so powerful, we can't just go full sprint right out of the gates. We have to be around long enough. We have to pace ourselves to achieve this amazing thing. At the end, we have to pace ourselves. And pace is something that, if I'm being honest, I don't think I figured out or even started to unpack at all until maybe a few years ago. I mean, I just like, and now it's starting to come to me. I agree with that. If I'm really going to do the things that that are going to be on my career epitaph, I've got to have enough energy and pace to actually get them all done. The worst thing I can do is burn out so that let's say that by the time I'm 60 or, you know, kind of some further date from now, which isn't that far away, at at some further date, I'm so exhausted that I can't go on. I need to be Jeff Wilkins from CompuServe, who looks like he hasn't aged a day in 30 years (laughs) right? and do whatever he's doing, right? Like, I want to be able to say what matters to me is helping founders at a career level. All that I care about is helping founders. And I want to be able to be around to do that effectively for as long as I possibly can until my last day, if possible, in a way that that I can sustain and that I care about. But I don't want to be in a situation, and I've been on this path, where I'm just running myself into the ground. And the idea is that somehow magically that's going to go away or take care of itself. It does not. It does not. That, that was the beginning of the decade you just described. Right. If you're you know, working towards the Jeff Wilkins plan, you're doing a good job. You're, you're on your way now because we were certainly looking way older Crazy. You know, seven, eight years ago than we look now. Right? Uh, at least when I look back and <laughs> some, of the, some of the photos, some of the stories right when Amazon and Google Photos and Facebook like to <laughs> pop things up and remind me just what a shitty job I was doing of taking care of myself, you as well. I'll throw Elliot into the mix here. I'll drag him into this. We were doing a great job of burning the candle at both ends and in the middle at the same time. Like if that was if that was the goal, then we nailed it. 
Ryan, you look younger now than you did 10 years ago, and you have COVID today. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that is, that's not, that's not a good sign. It's, it's not a good not sign. A good yeah. Sign. I am, I have now officially have begun participating in the pandemic for real. Wow. You took your time. Yeah. Well, look, it took, and you're it took podcasting. Like, I know. Well, hey, look, it's super mild. So, uh, you know, for anybody who's out there really suffering, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm getting off easy. The point is, we're going back to pace. But I think it's easier to understand pace if you have some perspective of what you're pacing for. Again, this goes back to the Iron Man idea. If I don't realize how long this thing is actually going to take and how much I need to pace myself, of course, I'm going to go sprinting right from the very beginning, right? Jumping into the river, if you will. And not realizing, not realizing that the only way to actually do this well is with pace. But you can only really appreciate pace if you understand how long the race actually is, which is interesting to me. Because for the longest time, and hell, if I'm being honest, up until about three or four years ago, I didn't understand how long this thing actually was. Now that I'm realizing it, how silly I felt about how I was pacing, you know? Yeah, we, we weren't pacing. We weren't pacing at all. I mean, like the only version of pace we had was like, how far does the accelerator get pushed down? That was it. What, what's the limit on acceleration? And, you know, if we if we draw an analog here and we were to say like, OK, yeah, you're going to start a race. We're not going to tell you how long it's going to take. We're also not going to tell you where the finish line is. Would you start off by just sprinting in a random direction? Because that's literally what we're doing with most of our startups. And, that, and that's, it's hysterical. Like, and you lean back and look at it that way, you go, yeah, I guess that doesn't sound like the brightest move. And yet that's what we do, right? We have very little definition about what the final form of the thing is going to be, how long it's going to take us to get there, and what we want to do with it at the end, right? Like what that legacy that we end up leaving looks like compared to what that first diagram sketch cocktail napkin with, you know, runny yank all over it. And the final product tend to be so different, right? So the idea that somehow we take that cocktail napkin map and we just start sprinting and we're going to maintain that until we figure it all out. Sounds kind of idiotic. If I were to take that a step further and I were to say, what is your pyramid? What is your building a pyramid? I'm talking about the Egyptian pyramids, right? As a metaphor, for what you really want to build out of your entire career. You know, let's say I'm, I'm interviewing somebody who's 27 years old and they I say, you know, what do you want to do with your career? They'll typically talk about how they want to go from point A to point B. Here, I want to become vice president or whatever and maybe move on to the next company. But if we're to zoom out, and this is so important for founders, and we say, what is your pyramid? What are you building your entire career on? So that when you retire, you can say, I did this. And the idea of this could be, I'm sure there's a wealth component. Obviously, people think about that. There's a change and impact on the world component. There's a personal developed component. But if you ask most people that you're interviewing, but I'll take this step further, and I'll put it on most founders. I said, you're working really hard now at this one thing. But what's your pyramid? What is that, that long-term life goal that all of this is working toward? For the longest time, I didn't have one. It didn't even occur to me, hence this podcast. And so I, to your point, I was just running in directions because I knew I was poor. So I just needed to fix that problem. But up until the last few years, I never had this career pyramid where I could say, you know what? Every single thing that I'm doing is actually working toward this singular collective goal. And, and, if, and if I were to illustrate that now, it's all I care about is making the world a better place for founders. I want to build a system, you know, not just with startups.com, but in my career, in my life where I help more people become founders. And not because that's any better than any other career, it's because the one thing I understand and I feel really passionate about. It's what we know how to help people do. Yeah, tomorrow, as I mentioned to you, I'm going to go to my kid's school and I'm going to start teaching middle schoolers entrepreneurship. It's part of my pyramid, right? I don't look at it as just this one-off thing that I do. I look at it as this is my legacy. My legacy is going to be planting seeds tomorrow with all these kids. And some of them will go on and use that seed and grow on to become entrepreneurs. And if they do, that's my pyramid. That's what I'm here to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think that like you hit on something else important there, which is that this thing is multifaceted, right? There are certainly personal financial goals. There are, there are personal learning and growth goals. There are goals for the family and, and, and kind of the legacy you want to leave there. There are things that you want to do professionally. And there's that sort of like overall dent you want to leave in the universe, which in, in our case is, is making this a better place to be a founder. I get it. But 
when we're talking about building these pyramids, here's what's so interesting. And this is really what this is all about. The fact is, if we want to build this big, amazing pyramid, this thing that'll stand the test of time that is our career and our legacy, if we try to just build the whole thing at once, it won't happen. We actually can't move that much earth, if you will, right? Conversely, if we just take, if we say, look, I want to build one stone at a time, and I'm going to keep pacing myself with those additional stones, those big giant cubes you know, that make up the pyramid, we cannot be stopped. That's the whole point to this. As a person that paces themselves with eye on the prize over a long enough period of time, we cannot be stopped. And that's why we should be focusing on this one singular goal of where we're taking everything. So in addition to all the stuff related to founder groups, you've also got full access to everything on startups.com. That includes all of our education tracks, which will be funding, customer acquisition, even how to manage your monthly financers. There's so much stuff in there. All of our software, including BizPlan for putting together detailed business plans and financials, LaunchRock for attracting early customers, and of course, Fundable for attracting investment capital. When you log into the startups.com site, you'll find all of these resources available.